let's explore the multiplication of whole numbers by way of a word problem. We are given that the Student Federation is advertising a group trip to Europe. The cost of air travel is $1,235 per student, and if 14 students decide to go on the trip, what is the total cost for air travel? The first sentence gives us some background information, some context. The second sentence gives us some key numbers and information that we can use in our calculation, as does the third sentence. So let's pull out that key information. So in the second sentence, the cost is $1,235 per student. In the third uh, sentence, we're told that 14 students are going on this trip, and we want to know the total cost. Okay, let's write this information out. So we'll start here, and we can write this as $1,235 per student. The word per actually means division, so this can be written as follows, per student. Next, we'll get our 14 students, so we write it as 14 students. And then we ask ourselves, what do we have to do to these two numbers in order to equal our total cost? Well, if one student goes on the trip, then it will be $1,235. So if 14 students go, it's going to be a lot more than that. So what we're going to have to do here is multiply these two numbers. Another way you can look at it is we can see that this is per student, so the students are in the bottom on this number, and they're in the top of this number, so they will actually cancel out, and we'll be left with dollars, which would represent our total cost. So now we know what operation we have to perform, so let's go ahead and multiply these two numbers. And let's also say that we um, don't have our calculator with us, so we're going to have to use th uh, a method to multiply these two numbers together. And I'm going to show you three different methods, and you can choose whichever method you prefer. The first method is called column multiplication. So what we do is we take the largest number and put it at the top, and then the smaller number on the bottom. And we make sure the place values are, are in the right columns, so the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. And we start with the number 4, and we're going to multiply it by everything in the top row. So 4 times 5 is 20, so we put the 0 of here, and we're carrying the 2 for the next column. Then we multiply 4 times 3, which is 12, and add the carry. So that's 12 plus 2 is 14. So we put the 4 here and carry the 1. Then we multiply the 4 times the 2, which is 8, add the carry. So that's 9. Place it in the right column. There's no carry this time. And finally, we multiply the 4 by the 1, which is 4. And we place that number in the appropriate column. So we've multiplied the ones digit by all the numbers in the top row. Now we're going to multiply the tens digit by all the numbers in the top row. And because it's a tens digit, we have to start in the tens column. So we place a zero in the ones column and start in the tens column. So we start with one times five, which is five. And we multiply 1 times 3, which is 3. And then we multiply 1 times 2, which is 2. And finally, 1 times 1, which is 1. And the last thing to do is then to add up our multiplication uh, rows here. So what would, would we get? 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12, carry the 1. 4 plus 2 is 6, plus the carry 1 is 7. 
and we're just left with one in the uh, final column. And in North America, what we do is we usually put a comma after every three digits. And so our total cost, to answer the question, would be $17,290. Okay, let's look at another method you could try. This method is called the box or grid method. It goes by some other names as well. So what you do is you write the largest number at the top, 1, 2, 3, 5, and then the smallest number on the side, 1, 4. And then we create a box with columns and rows. And then we do diagonals. We create a diagonal here, 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 and here. And then we look at each box in our grid and we multiply the numbers associated with that box. So this, in this case here would be 5 times 1. And we place the ones digit here. So 5 times 1 is 5 with no tens. So this here is the tens area and this is the ones area. And I'm just using the, another color so it's easier to read. Then we look at the next box, say this one here. So this would be 5 times 4, which is 20. So that would be 2 tens and 0 ones. And we keep going across. So the next would be 3 times 1, which is 3. So no tens and 3 ones. And 3 times 4 would be 12, 1 ten, 2 ones. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 4 is 4. Then what you do is add up the diagonals. So I'll start here. Well, there's only one number here, so 0 all by itself just remains as 0. Next, we add up this diagonal. So we've got 5 plus 2 plus 2 is 9. Then we add up the next one. This is this diagonal. So 0 plus 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4, plus 8 is 12. So in this case, the 2 comes here, and then we have to add 1 to the next diagonal. Carry the 1. So the next diagonal would be the 1 plus 0, which is 1, plus 2, which is 3, plus 0 is still 3, plus 4 is 7. And we keep going from right to left. So the next diagonal would be this one. So 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1. And then we've just got the 0 up here. So that would just remain as 0 at the end there. So our answer would be this number right here. And when we look at it, we can see it's 1, 7, Two nine zero. Now in Europe, what you can do is you just leave a space between the thousands number and the uh, hundreds numbers. So in this case, pretend there's just a space there, but it also is the exact same number and confirm that our multiplication here is correct. And here I've just rewritten the number, making it a little bit more pronounced so you can see the space between the thousands and the hundreds numbers. The important thing is we got the same answer. Okay, let's look at another method. Now what I'm going to do is move over and so I can show you this method in more detail. And this method is called the stick method. It goes by other names, but uh, we'll just call it the stick method. And what you do is you start with your largest number and you draw in diagonal sticks for each of the place values. So we have 1,000 stick, 200 sticks, 3 tens, 3 sticks in the tens column, and 5 sticks in the ones column.
Next, we look at the smaller number, and we draw in sticks for each of those place values. And we draw in opposite diagonals. So we have one ten stick and four one sticks. Then you go to the diagram, and any time the sticks cross, you draw a dot. So it's a dot there, 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 etc. Then what we do is we kind of separate the dots by looking at this kind of diagonal. So for example, I isolate that, those two, or that single dot there, this group of dots here, this group of dots here, and then this group of dots here. And then starting from the right, you count how many dots you've got. So over in this area here, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty dots. So you write 20, and then what you do is you take the tens digit and you carry it to the next column. So what I'm going to do is actually hey, say add two dots to this area as well. And then you count the dots all in this area here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, plus 2 is 19 dots. So you write your 19 dots here, and again, you take the tens digit and you carry it over to the next column. And you simply repeat the process. So, in this area, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, plus the carry is 12 dots. So we write the 12 dots here and carry the 1 tens digit to the next area. And we'll count the dots here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we write the seven here. There's no carry this time. So we just go to the next column and we've got one left over there. And we just write that number here. So our number is one, seven, two, nine, zero. So 1,235 times 14 is equal to 17,290. And that's the same number we got with the other two methods as well. So we're pretty confident that we've got the right answer. And the last thing we can do is give the answer in numerical form and also in words, how we write this number out. So it is $17,290. And there we go. The total cost for air travel is $17,290.